Hey guys, I'm here with the new LEGO Marvel Studios collectible minifigure series 2. LEGO sent me these early to review, but of course all thoughts are my own. And it's a bummer, but these now come in boxes as opposed to bags like they used to. Remember we got bags for series 1? Well now we have boxes and you can't feel for the figures you want. Now each box is going to weigh something different, so in a future video we'll be talking about how you can weigh these boxes to try and figure out who you've got. But in the meantime for this video, I'm going to get all of these opened up and show you what the figures look like in this review. So stay tuned for that and let's get into it. Also, let's talk about how awesome this box art is. You've got Wolverine, you've got the whole cast lineup here and you've got She-Hulk and then the front. So that's quite cool. And as you can see, the boxes are stacked in here. We've got a whole row up top and then there's a row underneath that. So there's a lot of figures to unpack here, but I'm gonna get to it now and be back with you in a second. So this is the first CMF series to come in boxes. Well, technically video did, but the first CMF anybody cares about. As you can see, you can rip it open from the side here, and there's all your pieces on the inside. So there's no way to feel for it, but we can weigh them, and I'll certainly do that in a future video. So stay tuned for that, and let's get into the review. In here, I've got all 12 figures opened up. Now, these come out September 1st, and they retail for $4.99. Anyways, from here on out, I want to talk about the figures that come in this set, and I'm going to review them all. Of course, that's why you clicked on this video, but we're going to start with the worst one, in my opinion, and work our way up to the best one in this series. So sit back and relax, and let's get into it. So unfortunately, somebody has to be last on the list. In this case, it's Echo. Now, this isn't necessarily because of the show or anything, but I just feel like this is kind of a wasted spot in the CMF series. There are so many Marvel figures that we need to still get from the MCU. And honestly, even just from like the second season wave of Disney Plus shows, I feel like there's so many more figures we could have gotten instead, like Cyclops from X-Men 97 or even Khonshu from Moon Knight. So I just feel like this is kind of a figure that took an unnecessary slot. But to talk about some of the good things, the printing on the braid is really, really nice. Of course, the prosthetic leg piece with printing there is absolutely gorgeous, as is the leg that has side printing on it as well. As we move up, you can see we've got dull molded arms that have printing on the tops and sides, which are really, really nice. Then we do utilize the new palette of skin tones that LEGO has been giving us the past few years, which is really nice. We do get a new hair piece, which again has that printing on the braid that we talked about before. And we can lift that hair up to see an angry face on the reverse side for fighting. And then, of course, a more calm face on the other side. And she's got something in her hand here. Since the show isn't out as of this video, it's hard to say what that specifically is supposed to be. But I guess once the show comes out, it will be evident to us all. In 11th place, we have Goliath, a.k.a. Bill Foster from What If Season 2. Now, as of this video being recorded, we don't really even have the full context as to what Goliath is going to do in What If. So it's hard to rate this kind of the same way as Echo, but I'm going to do my best. We do get an Ant-Man style helmet here with new blue printing. It is insane to me that we're getting a Goliath with helmet printing before we've gotten an updated Wasp from 2018, but I'll just leave that be for a second. We do get two Ant-Man micro figs. They're identical, but one of course is included as a bonus piece, so I do think it's worth noting here because it's kind of a minifig. Anyways, we've got great arm printing and dual molded legs with printing on them. Look how great the print is on the side of the legs as well as the front and the toes. This is definitely one of the better printed Marvel figures ever, but a lot of people were disappointed when we got the images from this and found out that this was uh, Bill Foster instead of Kang. A lot of people were hoping for Kang, and even though Kang hasn't popped up technically in his, you know, purple and green suit from the MCU in a Disney Plus show yet... I would have preferred that to this, uh, even as big of an Ant-Man fan as I am, but it is a really cool figure nonetheless, but he does unfortunately rank at number 11 for me personally. At number 10, we have Werewolf by Night. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like this figure a lot. The printing on it is absolutely immaculate, but compared to everything else on the list, he does come toward the bottom. You can see that he's actually got a lighter brown shade of arm with like fur printing on there, and that looks really good, especially to make him kind of look scraggly looking. He comes with a one by one rounded tile with the uh, bloodstone printing on there. We do get dual molded legs with dark green on top and brown on the bottom with fur printing and even toe claws on the front there. You can see that there's even some printing on the pants as well. 
the torso looks great. You've got all that fur and the abs and everything. I like that a lot. And we do get a brand new hair piece with the werewolf ears and kind of the shaggy haircut. And on one side, you can see he's got gritted teeth. And then we can flip it around to the other side and you can see he's got kind of an open mouth smirk. Now, one reason that this loses points for me is because, of course, in the show, we pretty much only see the werewolf by night in black and white. In fact, I think we only see him in black and white. And so to see him in color, it's a little hard to compare him to what we saw on the screen. So that's another reason why this loses points, but I think all the figures just get better as we go on. So let's keep going. At number nine, we have Storm from X-Men 97. This is the first time we've gotten X-Men minifigures in years other than Wolverine minifigs and even Magneto back in the day in a Mighty Micro set. So it's definitely cool to get this, especially in her X-Men 97 look. Now there's a lot to talk about here. The brand new Mohawk piece is really cool. I'd love to see this recolored in blonde for Captain Marvel someday. Of course, the head is really great with those piercing eyes. Then as we move down, we've got this shoulder accessory here that kind of gives her the pointy shoulders from the show. I absolutely love what they did with this cape and the way it connects to the wrists. That's super unique and something we haven't seen on a minifigure since the last time we got Storm. She also has great printing on the front of the torso. No side leg printing or dual molded legs, but honestly, they do look really good with the way they're printed. I'll kind of straighten her legs so you can see. Then I'll flip it around and lift the cape up so you can see the back. And for an accessory, she gets two lightning rods. I guess that's what we'll call them, the yellow lightning that you could put in her hands. And overall, this is an awesome figure and definitely a worthy inclusion. At number eight, we have Hawkeye. I love the way that this figure turned out, and he is so cool, but they didn't give him leg printing. The only figure in the entire wave to not get any leg printing, so that is a big place where it loses points for me, but I do love the little owl he comes with. That new piece is absolutely adorable, and as we move up, you can see we've got dull molded purple and black arms, which look really, really nice. Of course, one hand is black and the other is ungloved i suppose we've got a brand new bow mold here which is also used on kate bishop who we'll look at in a bit but here it's black on kate bishop it's brown we've also got a black quiver on the back we get a brand new hair piece for him i can't wait to see where this is used on other figures like this would actually look pretty good for andrew garfield in dark brown but on one side you can see he's got like a little bruise here and a bandage right near his eyebrow then when we flip it around, you can see we've got a more confident smirk on the other side. Either way, this figure looks really, really great, and I love it. It's just that leg printing that makes him lose some points and rank a little lower on the list. At number six, it was Agatha all along. This figure looks so good, and she comes with the dark hold, which is cool. You can see the printing there, and you open it up to the Scarlet Witch page on the inside. That's very awesome. She also gets Power Blast, the only figure in this wave that has, like, a accessory that actually does something. So if you don't know, with Power Blast, you just push it against the figure, and it shoots out of the hand a little something like that. She comes with a purple cape, which is definitely cool. I'll show you what it looks like without the cape on, but she also does come with with one of these jumper pieces but she looks a little weird when you put like the skirt on there because she leans a little too far forward so I think that they just include it because everybody gets them but this figure really didn't need that anyways she's got the big bushy uh hairdo here I love the winking face on one side definitely looks straight out of the show and the other side is kind of just like an evil grin that looks really good I'll lift that hair up so we can lift the cape up and you can see that there's printing on the back of the torso and printing on the back of the skirt and this is just such an awesome figure i absolutely love it does rank at number seven though because what's coming up next is awesome all right here we are folks at number six we've got hank mccoy himself the beast from x-men 97 this is so cool i can't believe we finally have a lego beast minifig and they went all out they gave him a new hairstyle piece here which I don't really know any other character it could be used on with those pointy ears and the pointy hair back, but I love that Lego gave us something so unique for this figure. Moving down, we've got a great head print. One side has the glasses on, and we can flip that around for a more savage beast look on the other side. As far as the torso goes, we've got printing on the front with all that blue fur in the X belt, which goes around to the back complimentary. Then we've got a little X mug logo, which fits the character great. And on the legs, we've kind of got his underoos with with the toe printing and the scraggly blue fur. No side leg printing, of course. And we do get this cool little stethoscope here where he's studying something green, some kind of plasma, something or other. But overall, I like this figure a lot and he comes in at number six. At number five, we have Jennifer 
Walters, aka She-Hulk, attorney at law. This figure turned out great. Look at the leg printing on those dual molded legs with white on bottom, black on top. You've got all that purple and white and black printing all over with the shoes and everything looks so great on the legs. As we move up, we've got dual molded arms, green and white with purple printing just above the elbows, which looks really nice. The torso printing is so great too. Look how it connects from the hips up to the torso. And then of course, if we flip that around back, her green hair kind of covers it up, but there's so much detailed printing on the back too. I love that they gave her the little dimple for the smirk on the head, but if we flip that green hair around, you can see of course that we've got a big Jen Walters grin. For accessories, we have a cell phone with Wong calling in, which I really, really love. And we've got a little case file here for Emil Blonsky. This is our first reference to Abomination in Lego form, which is cool. Then, of course, we've got the GLKH logo on there. And that really pulls the figure together. And she comes in at number five on my list. Here we have Mr. Knight, who comes with one of my favorite accessories. We've got the Gus fish tank here, which looks really cool. And I love that they included like a little Lego piece in there that looks like seaweed. And then on the right side, we've got a pyramid, of course, tying into the Moon Knight theme perfectly. For Mr. Knight, we actually do get a little bit of leg printing. That looks really nice, and that'll be great for customs. As we move up the torso, we've got that three-piece suit, which looks great. I love these batons and the silver color and the head looks awesome with the stitched Moon Knight mask. As we turn them around, we get a little bit of basic printing on the back of the head and the torso. Honestly, simplicity is key with this one and that Gus fish tank wins some major points for me. So this one ranks in at number four. At number three, we have Wolverine. Now, the reason he's at number three is because we've gotten many Wolverine minifigs before, or at least a handful over the years. And while I do think that this is the best one, I do want to save the other two spots for new figures. So, this one's really cool with the dual molded legs with light blue on bottom and yellow up top. So much great printing on the sides of the boots, all the way to the front that translates so well. The torso looks straight out of a comic book with that X belt that goes around to the back with the yellow and black detailing. I love the arms with the shoulder printing of the blue and the hairy arms. It is a little bit of a bummer that you can see the tan part closest to the body. Maybe dual molded arms would have worked well here, but then of course the hair on the arm wouldn't have worked all that great. So it's kind of a give and take scenario. Of course, he wouldn't be anything without his claws. He's got the iconic Wolverine helmet in a light yellow color and underneath the head you can see he's got the band around his eyes so that when you put the helmet on his eyes go white but you can flip that around for a more muted look on the other side where you can see the eyes but we also get a hair piece for him i don't like this hair piece as much as i like the like dracula style hair that wolverine's usually gotten over the years but this does look okay and i do think it's worth giving it a pass for as we move it around you can see he comes with a sentinel head you know that's a cool accessory for it to come with there was a rumor originally that all the X-Men were going to come with enough pieces to build a full Sentinel. And while that would have been cool, I'm happy with the head here. And this secures Wolverine at the number three spot. At number two, we have Kate Bishop. I love Kate Bishop in the show, and the minifigure holds up so well. We do have Lucky the Pizza Dog here, who they printed with his eye sewn shut. I love the way that this turned out, and it looks so good. We're going to set him aside for a second. Then we've got the Hit the Spot Pizza Box, which looks excellent as well. Gotta love that. Then for Kate Bishop herself, we've got so much great printing here. Side printing on the legs with all the different arrowheads she can swap out. We've got front printing with the purple bands around the legs and then if we lift the bow up you can see that there's like a little pocket printed there it looks so amazing i absolutely love that there's great printing on the side arm with that light pink there then the front torso is great with her like strap along the side and her black belt there's no printing on this arm interestingly enough but we do get the uh brown bow remember hawkeye's bow is the same mold but in black then we have a quiver on the back as well and she has two sides to the head i'm gonna lift up the hair so you can see that she's got some scuffs on her face with a little bandage above her eyebrow on one side then on the other side we've got a confident smirk which i like a lot and then of course that big hair piece with the ponytail in the back looks great and i love the way that this figure comes together which is why she's at number two and taking home the number one spot is moon knight himself now i do want to tell you guys he comes with two of these moon crescent pieces and he also comes with two of the scarab which is quite cool the printing on this figure is immaculate the legs are dual molded like so many figures in this series and the printing is so detailed with all of the little lines and maybe even inscriptions there it just looks so great and i love that 
As we move up to the torso, all of the mummified wrapping around him looks so good, as does the printing on the arms. Look at the details around the wrists. As we move it to the other side, you can see the same level of detail was given to both arms. We can lift the cape up to see some great printing on the back as well. He's got a brand new headpiece with the crescent printed on there. And if we lift that up, you can see that they went into all kinds of detail on the head. And we even get the head on the back that looks like Oscar Isaac with the white eyes eyes. Overall, I love this figure. I really love a lot of the figures in this series, but this one in particular is just so awesome. So let's zoom out and I'll give you my final thoughts on this wave of MCU figures. All right, guys, let me know what you think of these figures now that they're finally unboxed and we can take a look at them. I do think that this is a really, really great series. And of course, for the Marvel fans, it's something we've been waiting for for a long, long time. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for more LEGO Marvel content, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.